Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to my channel, Quick Bites. Uh, this quick tutorial I am doing today for you is on mystery pictures. Uh, I am in love with these. I found them last year, they're so much fun. I've got some quick tips for you on how to create your own. And really I'm gonna give you the base template today so that you can start creating your own Need, uh, according to your student needs or what you'd like to create one to go with. So these uh, mystery pictures, if you have not seen one, let me open up. Basically, you're going to start with a sheets page. It's really simple. Um, I will show you one that I've already done. Uh, and this was, let's see, um, this was on the mystery picture family. Um, this one I created actually with a Google Slides uh, activity in the beginning. So let me bring that all up to show you two ways to do this. So mystery pictures, you can either work with Google Slides and make a link to the sheets where the students can put their answers. So it gives you kind of more of a design feel and easier way to force for you to get uh, what you want to add. So this is the mystery picture family. So really simple. I created a bunch of different slides. Um, on the second slide, I gave directions. I told the students to open up Mr. Uh, the link. I made a copy so that it forces them to make a copy. And then you simply go back and the students would need to unscramble each word. And each of these words kind of went with Thanksgiving and family. So um, for the first one, obviously, is family, once you unscramble it. Because I created the formula, watch what happens when I type in family. As you can see, part of the picture starts to reveal. And as the students go through each part of each question, it opens up more and more pieces. Now, if they misspell something wrong, it does not work. So that means when they don't see anything, they have to actually fix it so that it will start to, um, the picture will start appearing for them. And they can go back, and if you see that they're doing something wrong, uh, then you can help them out. Um, obviously it's cornucopia and as you can see part of the blue just filled in so if you haven't figured this what this is going to be it is from uh, Lilo and Stitch so this is Stitch when he's all uh, revealed so what I'm going to show you is how to simply make one of these um, by scratch which is really easy so let me just click out of the two. And you know, I started doing it, so I just open up a, a sheets page, which is probably the easiest way to start. So I'm gonna actually go through and I'm going to open up a new tab. You're gonna go to sheets, have a nice blank sheet one started. You can always title it later, but I always recommend um, uh, every teachers to students to title their page first. So obviously this is going to be a spring picture. So you can make it science, math, whatever you want. Basically, the world is open on this. You can do links to in each of these um columns, you can have a link to a site, maybe they have to name the picture, come back to this and put the answers in B. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your questions and your answers have enough room so you can widen them up. And then what I do is I actually click on the awesome box, which I, you know, I found this on a site, that's what they called it and I move it inward because I want my squares to be small. Don't worry about the question and answer page, you can manipulate that later. And then what I do is I right click and I insert 26 more columns. Okay, I don't need the answers yet, but I do need more room to make my pictures. Now, 
You can make these as wide or as small as you want. I usually make them the size of a square, but I always click the awesome box so they're all the same size. That's really important. And then what I do is I take my A and I widen it. Oops, sorry, did that wrong. So I just click the undo arrow. I unclick first, then I widen my A and I widen my B so that my picture is kind of going to be over here, but my answers and my questions are going to be over here. Now, if you have younger students, try to do it on the same page, have your questions here and your answers here, it'll be a lot easier for them. If you have, um, I would say fourth or fifth grade and up, they can definitely go from a slide to back to a sheet. They can have two tabs open and go back and forth. It's really easy for them. I don't think that is actually very difficult. And I actually think it gives them um, an easier way of teaching them how to handle more than one tab, because as they get older, they're going to have that issue. So I don't, um, I, you know, I like to do everything on one page. But if I'm working with an, another older teacher, I'll suggest to use a Google slide to house all her questions, especially if it's in detail or she's got sites that she wants the kids to um, look up or research to find the answers. Or if it's a math teacher who has um, fractions or more involved um, uh, math problems, she may want to do that in a Google Slides. For me, I've been doing the unscrambled words, which are really simple, or you could do really simple addition problems. Basically, you could do anything you want under, under the questions. Um, I'm going to make it really simple today, and I'm just going to do unscrambled words. But before I do that, I have to decide on my picture. So I found this really neat trick, um, and I did not know this was going to work. My sister is really into cross stitching and I came upon her patterns and I noticed that the patterns online for cross stitch were identical to what I needed for the pixel art to come up and to figure out how to place a picture on here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, you actually have to do work involved with this, which means you have to look at the cross stitch pattern, you have to count the squares and you have to uh, re-duplicate it onto your sheet. Think of this as a canvas. If you don't like that, then there are um, under uh, Teacher Pay Teachers or even under Pinterest, there is a mass amount of these templates all over the place that you can get. Um, but I like to create my own because I'm into this stuff. And um, so that's what I'll do. So the first thing I'll do is go to my tab. And I'm going to type in Let's see, a, a duck with umbrella cross stitch pattern. You want to put in the words cross stitch pattern because that's what you're going to need to create. So really a bunch of things come up. I'm going to pick this one. Sometimes you're not going to get what you need and sometimes you get lucky. Um, I'd actually just do the umbrella but I wanna make sure I can clearly see the squares. So it's really important that no matter what I pick, that I go through and make sure that I can actually see the squares. And sometimes it does take me a little while and it may take me a couple days to find the exact pattern that I need. So I will keep looking for a pattern that I really think would be easy to follow. So I may actually do this one. Um, it doesn't have an umbrella, which is fine. It does show me a duck, which I wanted. So I'm actually going to click on this pattern. And it brings up a couple of different ones. So this is pretty cool. I could use this one, which would be a really good, easy one to start. So maybe I'll widen it. And I think what I'm going to do is, if you have a cut and snip, do that now. You want to snip or even like take a screenshot of it just so you have it. 
And then you can always save it so you don't lose it. So I'm going to save as, and I'm just going to save it on my desktop just so I have it. So here is my pattern. It is a duck. I can get, I can add more stuff to this. Obviously, maybe I even want to fill this in with yellow. But this is how I get started. So once I have my cross stitch pattern, I'm actually going to make this side by side. So I'm going to need to open up my share sheet and I've got my snipping tool over here. Now you can make this even smaller, you know, because you do need a little bit of room because you do have to decide how far over you want this to start. You want to start your picture. I always start in the double A's or even the S's because I want to make sure that I have enough room to do the picture. So as I get started, I'll do double A for now, but you can choose how you want to, where you want to start. It really doesn't matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first line and you really just go line by line all the way to the bottom. And obviously this duck is kind of nice because you can add into your specifications. Maybe you want to make him blue or yellow. Maybe you want to turn the pink into dark yellow or and maybe if you're a really good drawer, you want to add that umbrella later. I don't. I think I'm just going to use this. So I need three squares to start. So I'm going to start on number two line. I'm going to really just click on this, click on my three dots, click on here. And I'm going to actually do um, yellow. Skip just like it shows. Do the next one. Now that's a little bit brighter. So obviously I picked the wrong color. Let me go down. There we go. And then the third one. Okay, so I have all three yellow in place. That's my first line. If you notice, the second line is empty, so I will skip. And then I'll go to the third line. And you can almost eyeball it, or you can count one, and then I'll need one there. And I'll need to make sure I count how many are in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to put one here. And believe me, if you cannot see these squares, so let's say while you're doing this, these are really light for you, you can click the awesome box. I don't do this often, but if you click on borders, you can click on and click on this and then dark. And I'm just going to make this shade just a little bit darker for me to see while I'm filling these in because I can always later make them lighter. So for right now, though, I do need the darkness. Um, you may not which is fine. But if you notice, I already have part of the head shaped. It's, it does go quite quick. So once I have all my shapes in place, I'm actually going to show you one that I've started. So let me go to my, let me enlarge this. I'm going to go to my drive. I'm going to show you one that I've already started. Um, as you can see, um, it is a duck. And he is um, basically, it's just going to be a regular duck. I'll show you. Um, and I already have uh, his, he was a duck in an egg shell. So this was going to be for Easter and spring. I was going to send it out at the end of April. Okay, so now that that is done, um, I hadn't really started doing anything else. So I'm going to move this over and I'm going to type in questions right here. And I'm going to type in answers. I believe I did not do this first because I didn't know really where to put the duck. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough room for the duck while I was working on this. And as you can see, you can go as far down as you want or as over. You can even add in another 26. If I mean, I've seen teachers do creative things with these. Some of them do it by freehand. I'm not there. I need the cross stitch pattern. Or if you need to just buy a template, absolutely.
They're online all over the place. So the first thing you need to do is once your picture is completed, once this whole thing is done, this is where the magic starts in. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what I want my questions to be. So I think I'll do the unscramble words again. And, or you could do just quick questions. Maybe you have a quick um, social studies review coming up. You could put a quick question in here and make sure the answer. So I'm going to go up here to format and I'm going to go down here to conditional format rules. And this is where the magic happens. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that your range matches the color that you want. So obviously I'm gonna start with this first, the eggshell. I'm going to click on add another range. I'm gonna hold my control button down, which allows me to click on, make sure you get the color squares you need. And you know what, for the first time you're doing this, I'm pretty, um, familiar on how to do this now. So the first time you do this, you may want to take it slow and not add everything in at once. So you may want to try to half this and just do a little bit at a time. I'm going to do it all at once. I'm going to click OK because really this is so easy, but if you make a mistake, you will see the color right away. So the next part you have to do is you actually have to go down here to custom formula. Now I've written the formula on back on the page that you guys were, that um, I have on my slideshow for the course, but here is the formula. It's very easy. It's equal sign, dollar sign, letter B. Now letter B means it's gonna look for column A for the answers. If you have your answers in column C, this would be C. So basically the answer column is what goes first. Then you're going to need another dollar sign. And then you're going to need which color. So they, it's gonna be number two because I want number two to be orange. So I'm gonna put two. And then I'm gonna put an equal sign again. Then in quotation marks is where the word or the answer comes in. And I'm gonna put egg. Very simple. And then I'm going to pick my color. It is not gonna be blue. So I wanna make sure that the color I have here is the color that I'm picking, which is right here. And I'm going to click done. And you can see it highlights what I've actually picked. So it kind of tells me if I did it right. Now, here's the thing. Now you wanna check to make sure so here's what I do usually to um, to make sure. Now, obviously this, I don't want it to be orange. So for some reason, it's right there. You can see, and you could take those right out. And But don't forget to click done. So I'm going to actually make sure that this is correct. So I'm going to click... Um, So actually what I sometimes do just to tell you is sometimes I don't do the color right away and I'll click like a different color just so I can see if I missed any, which I did. So I'm gonna make sure that those are in there. So I'm just gonna click the range and do another range and make sure that I click on the ones I missed. Oops, that was wrong. Just make sure that you do the right ones and that's what you want and then click okay. All right, so once that's done, um, you can actually click on the whole thing, obviously, and click reset. And I'm going to just going to click reset. I'm gonna see if I can get this. So I do want to show you um, what this is going to look like. And for some, and I'm going to click egg out. 
So when you're all done with your questions and you've gone through the formula and you did everything the way you're supposed to, you hand it over to the students and as they type in egg, a picture begins to show. Now, obviously I wanna fix that. So I'm just gonna click on uh, conditional formatting and make sure that it is the picture that I want. Make sure that it works. Make sure that it, it's exactly how I, how I planned it. So, like I said before, this is one that I've started. Um, I'm going to just go back to my original picture. I'm just going to click the undo and get it back. There it is. So now that this is all set, this is exactly how I want to start it. Then I would start on the second color, third color, fourth color, and you can go on and on. Once you have this all in place, you simply share it out. You make it public. Get your title in. Make this public so that everybody, um, all the students have no problem getting in it. But what I would then do, if you're going to do Google Classroom, make sure a copy is for each student so that they don't ruin your original copy. Or click on this very easy trick. Erase edit. Type in copy. Copy that link. And really, that forces any teacher to make a copy before they open it, which means they don't ruin your product. So let me show you another picture that I did so you can get the idea. So there was another picture I did, it was called Spring Picture. This is one that I created, very simple. Nope, sorry, I did another Spring Picture. One that was really fun as well. This is my Spring Picture. I'm actually gonna show you the final product. And as you can see, everything's gone, but as students type in, the words, um, it will start forming a mystery picture. And they really love this. I think it's just a matter of, it takes a little bit of energy to create and, um, and the students really, really do love when it's all done. And like I said, you can make these questions and answers as hard as you want or as easy as you want, a vacation tool. There's sky's the limit. So that's really how you make a spring picture. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you really like it, I hope you come back to Quick Bites and subscribe and watch some of my other videos coming. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a great day. Bye.